Ladies and gentlemen, the next generation of Ryzen processors looks to be very interesting, at least according to all of the leaks that we've been, of course, covering on the channel, and of course, many others have also been discussing. But the question is, when will you actually be able to buy them? Because no matter how performant they are, if you can't physically buy them, what does it matter? Well, um, AMD naturally will be giving us a full rundown of the Computex event, which is going to be happening in, in just over a week's time. And we're expecting Strix Point, uh, Granite Ridge, plus a number of other products to basically have some stage presence. And we will probably expect to see the release date, pricing, and many other details besides. However, a mini PC manufacturer has actually decided to spill the beans a bit early. And we were asked point blank when the next generation Ryzen PCs are coming out. And on Discord, our star Liang, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. I get the feeling probably not. So if someone wants to correct that in the comments, that would just be spiffy. The big brand will be launched in August and we estimate it's going to be around October. Now, the big brand, of course, means AMD, specifically almost certainly in this case, Strix Point, which again are the APUs and APUs are more likely to be found in a mini PC. They also, of course, are in laptops and other such products as well. Granite Ridge, however, is likely to launch at about the same time. So this basically means August is when we're gonna see these things come into store shelves. Now, it's gonna be interesting to see exactly which products launch first. For example, we may only get specific SKUs. This is an example, this is not a leak, but maybe we'll see like the 99, uh, 100x and something else maybe the the 8 uh, 12 or something cores and then maybe the 16 will launch later again that's not a leak i haven't even heard that i'm just simply saying that is slightly possible but my guess is probably we'll see everything happening around August. And the mini PCs naturally will be available in October, which probably means that it's gonna just take time for these companies to basically have a ready uh, supply of these processors and for them basically to start trickling out uh, into suppliers' hands and then obviously for them to craft the PCs. Probably we will see larger OEMs, especially for some stuff like Strix Point, basically get dibs. This might also happen for Granite Ridge as well, and then maybe Infuse will have more limited supply but obviously it's way too difficult to predict things like supply at this point i personally don't think we're going to run into an instance where you won't be able to buy like a 12 cores n5 processor but who knows it's also going to be very interesting to see what the pricing of these things is going to be like and i'm going to be very curious to see how the performance ends up obviously there have been so many contradictory leaks regarding zen 5 i recently covered this quite extensively in a video personally speaking i'm still guessing we're probably going to see around 20% on average IPC gain for the Ryzen iteration. I think potentially in some scenarios it may be higher. Um, I still have some people who are insisting to me that the processors do go much higher in terms of IPC, but I personally like to, um, well, I'm just trying to keep my expectations somewhat in check, I suppose. So moving away from AMD, and we're now going to discuss just Xbox real quick. So I'm going to make this pretty brief because I want to start digging more into my own information. And um, quite frankly, I've just come back from vacation, so I'm trying to catch up on rumors somewhat. But there has, of course, already been a lot of leaks concerning the next generation consoles. Now, obviously, at this stage, a lot of the details are so still somewhat sketchy. Um, what we have learned about Microsoft is likely we're going to see the next generation systems launch in roughly 2026. Uh, my own sources are telling me that still, and there have been some other reports online. Further, it seems that we're going to see both handheld and a traditional console model. Now, what the difference is in terms of specifications, how performant either of those consoles is, I don't honestly know. And Sarah Bond and others at the Microsoft team are basically saying that the next generation of hardware is definitely coming. And they are making some pretty bold claims, actually, in terms of it being one of the biggest hardware leaps ever and so on, which... I mean, that's a very difficult claim to back up. And I'm not saying that simply because, well, it's just in terms of like, well, just the hardware, you know, in terms of like the actual hardware progression is slowing down. But 
it's also just like how are you quantifying that is it going to be just in terms of raw t flops are you talking about that in terms of like 3d capabilities is it going to be things like in ai i'm just going to be very interested to see how they actually decide to um well basically what their vision is for the future but intriguingly windows central chess gordon is stating that microsoft are basically going to be essentially creating a reference design where manufacturers will then be able to make their own devices so basically this is going to be a little bit like we've seen with surface pro 11. so what this means essentially is that you could basically license the ability from microsoft to create a design and then you would be able to play well games on that hardware now this would be interesting because there have been a lot of rumors that microsoft want to open up their ecosystem and even phil spencer has somewhat hinted this they want to open up the ecosystem and allow basically competitors to sell games on their store and naturally we've seen microsoft port games um to the playstation and so on so it's going to be very interesting if that is actually the case because we've also seen rumors that the next generation of xbox development is actually being led by the surface team so i will be very curious to see actually what the direction is for this uh, set of consoles because i mean you can make a very good argument that a handheld xbox design that has certain functionality and features could be pretty cool if for example you can have like a work mode on it and you could do well work but you also have a capable gaming device as well that would be pretty awesome um i think sony at this point have traditional you know the traditional gaming model pretty much on lock uh with that said of course even though the playstation 5 is selling very well um, particularly given the fact that obviously you know the first year or two had well let's just say challenging problems like every you know and everyone knows what i'm talking about there you know with the coof um i think everyone knows that you know sales may have been a bit different but the playstation 5 is doing well however there does seem to be that like that ceiling where when you start getting like 100 120 130 or so million consoles it becomes very difficult to actually get past that number uh, the new, the, the the latest Switch figures, I can't remember exactly what they were, but it looks like they they are really in contention to actually beating, like, you know, having one of the highest selling consoles ever. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this shapes up. There has also been a lot of rumors concerning Microsoft, where they're basically doing some type of emulation, but it's advanced emulation. And this would potentially allow different hardware configurations to basically run different Xbox games, essentially in Blades. And that could also be very interesting. I also suspect, and I'm not saying this with any degree of certainty, but if they do things like this, they, they have the potential to do some really interesting stuff for backwards compatibility. If you're a PC gamer, you'll know that there are a lot of mods and a lot of abilities for you to do like some crazy ass stuff um for you know regular games like you know you can buy and obviously you can do things like inject ray tracing and stop buggering around with post-processing however those same abilities are also present in emulators and this is one of the re i can't remember if it was a i can't remember which emulator it was for the switch but um, one of them allows you to do some really nuts stuff like inject ray tracing into zelda so i wouldn't be surprised if you could kind of do that stuff with the next generation xbox console again that is speculative but if they can start doing some really low level stuff for the apis and basically just you could go kind of nuts the problem of course is no matter how good the hardware is no matter how good the ideas are and you know backwards compatibility is very important at least in my personal opinion it's also going to be a case of microsoft needing to sell the hardware so it's going to be just very interesting to me to see how all of this shapes up let me know your thoughts and opinions i'm gonna let you all go take care of yourselves bye for now